Alright YouTube, we are doing a breakdown of Lily's move list. I'm gonna go through each move in her move list and I'll say my opinion about the move and how I would use it. So I'm gonna start with the Rage Art. Her Rage Art is a classic mid slow Rage Art. Since it is slow, um, it might not come out when you want to mash a Rage Art under pressure because you wouldn't have enough frames for it. The good thing about this Rage Art is that it low crushes because it's basically her forward forward 3. So if you have a very small amount of health left and your opponent decides to do a low, uh, you're still going to survive because the Rage Art will not absorb the low. She will, Lily will jump over the low instead and you'll survive. So this is a reason why her Rage Art is a little bit better than your regular Rage Art. The Rage Drive. This is uh, a homing mid. It is um, plus 9 on block, but in the open it has lots of pushback. So you may not be able to make use of the plus 9 frames unless your, your opponent is dumb and they do not backdash. In which case I would do something like a down 3 or forward 4. Something that has long range and would work as a frame trap. Um, it's much better at the wall since there is no pushback. So you can make better use of the plus frames. So I really prefer using this as a pressure tool at the wall. But in the, even in the open it's a good panic move. <laughs> it's a launcher that is mid, homing and plus 9 on block. Might as well throw it out. In combos it's not very good. Um, I would rather just use the Rage Art in combos because um, the Rage Art deals more damage in combos. I would only use the Rage Drive in combos when I really want that extra wall carry. Other than that, I would not use this in combos. And she is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2 is a good 10 frame poke, minus 1 on block, plus 8 on hit, which is a lot. But it's even better as a 10 frame punisher. Her other 10 frame punisher is 2, 4, which has sort of a really crappy range. So many times you want to use 1, 2 instead, and then make use of the plus 8 frames and do something like a frame trap forward 4 or pressure them with a low. Now the low, eh, it's not that good, but it has its uses. It's minus, minus 13 on block and minus 2 on hit. So it is negative on hit. This is why it's not a really good pressure tool. And it is a really situational low. It does knock it does knock down on counter hit. That's why it's so good. And you get a free down three and other good stuff. Um I would not use the low when I punish something with 1-2 because you can make much better use of the plus 8 frames as I said before with frame traps and stuff like that. Or do better lows such as forward forward 4. I would use the low only when poking with 1-2 and throw out the low occasionally to catch people who are pressing buttons. That's the use of... That's the main use of the slow poke. Low extension. She also has 
one, two, four. Uh, it's not really, it's not a really good string because the opponent can interrupt in sidestep the mid on block. When they block the jabs, they can interrupt the mid. But um, it's really good uh, when you punish uh, something with the jabs. Um, when you do frame traps after the after the jabs with forward four. Your opponent still might be able to stuff in a Rage Art or a Parry or stuff like that. But if you continue the string with 1 to 4 on hit, um, they can't do that. They have to block the mid. There is nothing else they can do. That's why this mid is, is good. And it might catch people. And if if you poke with jabs, it might might catch people that press buttons. But stop using this as soon as they know how to float this or sidestep this. Then she has two, three. Uh, this is basically the same low um, as from one, two, three. It is not natural. It is not natural on hit. And I'm pretty sure. Wait, what? This is natural on normal hit? Okay, I didn't know that. Anyway, you don't want to use this as a punisher since 2 4 deals more damage. And 1 2 also de deals more damage and gives her more plus frames. Now, I like to use this low when I jab, when I jab sometimes, um, like this, when I use a 2 jab as a poke, and occasionally, occasionally finish the string to catch people pressing buttons, or um, when the 2 jab whips and your opponent tries to whiff punish you, they still might they, they they might still get caught with the low. That's why that's why it's a pretty useful string. And this is how I would use two three. Now two four is um two four is her ten frame punisher. Uh, the second hit can be ducked on block. This is why you do not really want to use this as a poke and just poke it 1 2 instead. But if your opponent does not duck 1 4, you can poke with this and sidestep afterwards because it's only like minus 1 or minus 2 on block, so you will evade a lot of stuff with a sidestep. And many people do not realize that this is only minus one or minus two on block. So they're gonna try pressing buttons and jabbing against you and stuff like that. And in that case, you're gonna get it with punish. I love doing a 2 4 into sidestep at the wall. But yeah, it's pretty much a gimmick since 2 4 can be ducked on block. Also, the second hit has good tracking. It might be kind of difficult to sidestep the second hit, so yeah, you can use this, use the extension even against opponents that like to step, and you can delay it as well. So it it can be a part of her poking game, but it is risky. And she is standing three. Um, this is a mid that has really big range. 3-1 um, is mainly used as a punisher, especially for stuff like Heihachi's forward for 2, you know, stuff with pushback. The 3 itself has a really low hitbox, so it can be used as an Oki Zemi tool because it hits side rolls 
in some situations and people trying to stand up. But in the neutral, it can be a useful poke to throw out once in a while as a keep out tool. <laughs> this is as close as you will get to a keep out tool with Lily. And the, the bad thing about this move is that um, if the opponent knows that he will go into backturn stance instead of finishing the strings, they can launch you in backturn stance and you, can, and you can't do anything about it. Now, if you can space out this poke uh, correctly, then characters with shorter limbs might whiff their jabs. So once again, this is really situational, but it's not bad to throw out once in a while. Then she has 3-2 and 3-1. As I said, 3-1 is a Punisher. 3-2 is a high, but it is a good poking string <laughs> until your opponent starts ducking. In that case, you want to cut you want to keep doing 3 or if you want to, you can risk 3-1, but eh. I think that risk is not worth it because it's minus 13 on block, so you might get punished heavily for finishing the string. And she can go into Dewglide uh, after 3-2. I would always um, suggest going into Dewglide instead of just doing 3-2 and do something like Dewglide cancels or Dewglide moves, whatever. It's an alright booking string, not amazing because it's a high and it can be ducked, but not, not, not a bad move to throw out once in a while. And going into Dewglide gives you that mental frame advantage, you know? And it also gives uh, Lily better frames on hit when you go into Dewglide. 3-2 on its own is plus 2 on hit, but if you're going to Dewglide, it's plus 5. And on counter hit, even plus 9. Also, 3 has really good tracking to Lily's left. Like, really good tracking. So you, can, so you can use this as a tracking mode. But then the extensions whiff sometimes. Even if you hit the opponent with 3. So I would suggest using only the first hit as a tracking mode. Then she has 3 2 3. This is a safe extension, but it is a high. Good opponents will duck it. But you know, if you condition them um, into pressing buttons because they expect you to go into do glide, you can finish the string occasionally and get a knockdown or a loss, but. So yeah, it is another situational string. And that's how you use it um, against people who press buttons. There's no other use for this extension. And she is standing for... This is a 12, 12 frames fast high. It is linear. And she also has 4-1. Eh, it might be an okay poking move. It doesn't jail on block. It used to be her long-ranged 12, 12 frame punisher, but now she has forward 2-3 as a 12 frame punisher. So there's no reason for using 4-1 other than for poking. And it, it is not an amazing poke to begin with. But it is plus 7 on hit, so that's good. Sometimes I like to use this as a frame trap after down 4 or 3 because it's plus 3 on block and 4 is 12 frames fast or after forward forward 4. Once again, not a really good move, but not a really good move, but it's alright. Uh, then she has 4 1 3, which is the beginning of her uh, 10 hit string 
I, again, I, I don't really see any use for this other than for confusing your opponents. It's a gimmick. And it's not even natural on counter hit. The whole string is not natural. They can still block the last hit. Alright, then she has 1 plus 2. This is a 12 frames fast mid. It's minus 12 on block. It used to be her primary 12 frame punisher. Uh, but now she has 4, 2, 3. But it still has its uses. Uh, sometimes you have moves that are like minus 12, minus 13, or minus 14, and the opponent ends up crouching, so you cannot punish them with forward 2, because it is a high, so in those situations you have to use 1 plus 2 as a punisher. So it's good that she still has this move. Uh, if they don't back roll, you get a stomp. But once again, they can back roll and then you don't get anything guaranteed. This move does wall splat, but you have to be really, really close at the wall. Close to the wall to make this wall splat. Not really amazing for wall splats when you're far away. Hmm. Let's see if I can show you. As you can see, you have to be close to the wall. Uh, outside of punishment, you can use this as a, pa as a panic move when people are in your face and you just really want them to get away already. Might not, might not be uh, that bad as a panic move. Also, it has tracking to Lily's right. So, you will see many Lily players using this as a frame trap after down 4 3. And it also catches people stepping to Lily's right. So, it covers both, both situations people pressing buttons when you're on frame advantage, and people trying to sidestep to your right. And that's how you use this move. Now she has forward 2 3. As I said, this is her 12 frame punisher. It reaches even mid grab kicks easily. Wall splats from really far. It's an amazing 12 frame punisher, and I'm glad Lily has it. It makes her really shine. Uh, outside of punishment, do not really do not use this thing very often. You can also delay the second hit. Some some Lily players claim they can hit confirm um, the second hit. I have to admit that I had I had this feeling a few times that I was able to hit confirm it, but it's really difficult. It's like you have to you have to predict your opponent pressing buttons in order to be able to hit confirm this. The one the, the window for hit confirming is just way too small. Um the good thing about forward 2 is that it tracks super well to Lily's right. So it's not a bad poke to throw out once in a while. Uh, especially against people that want to sidestep to her weak side, which is her right. Um, but the second hit is minus 50 on block. This is why you do not really want to finish the string outside of punishment. Also, when you punish with this, she gets uh, some of the Okizemi. I've talked about this before on many occasions. Not gonna talk about this again. Um, once again, if you use forward 2 3 as a tracking move, sometimes, even on hit, uh, the extension whips. Lily has really weird hitboxes. And this is one of those cases where it's like, what the fuck, why is this whipping? 
Okay, moving on, we have... Forward three. This used to be her only homing move. Um, the range looks like it should be good, but it's not really good. Since it's only a knee. As you can see, it whiffs at this range. Um, sometimes this move also has really weird hitboxes, like in matches, I'm in my opponent's face and and this move randomly whiffs on them. It's so easy for the opponent to backdash this, this homing move, this is why I don't really like using it, even though it's um, minus 5 on block, so it's not really bad for uh, boss fighting mid homing move. I would use this when you need a homing move and a mid, when people start ducking quarter super four with 3 plus 4. But I would always prefer using quarter super four with 3 plus 4 as a homing move if I can. It's just much better. Um, okay, then we have forward 4. This is a very important move for Lily. It's one of her faster mids uh, at 17 frames. I know, right? 17 frames is usually really slow, but it's considered really fast for Lily. <laughs> it is safe, minus 9 on block. Once again, you can get a free stomp if the opponent doesn't back roll. Um, okay, um, up, up close in the opponent's face. This move has zero tracking, but when you're far away from the opponent, it's really difficult to step forward four. So I like to use this as a flame trap after wall standing one two and jabs, or even after down forward one on hit, because there are plus seven and plus eight on hit. So forward four will work as an uninterruptible and unsteppable frame trap really important move for Lily. And it's also great for bullying the, po the opponent at the wall with a safe mid. That wall splits. Uh, okay, then she has forward 1 plus 2. Uh, this move is whatever. It's 14 frames fast and it does knock down on counter hit for guaranteed follow-ups. But the frames are not amazing, and it's really linear as well. It's about minus 5 on block, and plus 3 on hit. On normal hit, it forces crouch, which is good. But it's not good on block, since it's, plus, it's uh, minus 5. Not really good for something that is supposed to be used as a poke. Not bad to throw out once in a while, especially against opponents that like pressing buttons. And you need a quick mid. Um, I also like using this after forward forward 4. Because forward forward 4 is plus 4 on hit. So forward 1 plus 2 will always trade hits with jabs. And even after down forward 3, it will interrupt almost everything, except jabs. So that's how I use this move. Sometimes I would even do something like a jab into forward 1 plus 2, since jabs are all also plus on block. Then she has forward 3 plus 4. And this is a mid that is around minus 2 on block. So once again, you know, it doesn't look like a move that is only minus 2 on block. So people are going to try pressing buttons. And once again, Lady can just sidestep and we punish them. That's how I like using this. Uh, as a safe mid and... She has options after this. And then she has the delayed sundial. 
Um, this is uh, all right uh, for a situ for a situational move. I forgot to mention four with three plus four hits grounded, so it, it also can be used as, as an Okizemi tool when you need a safe bow crushing mid. But it does not hit Saigo, so keep that in mind. This one also hits grounded, the delayed version. But uh, if they block the first hit, uh, the opponent can hop kick you in between. But if they don't, um, this is good to use for a variety. As it's also safe on block, the second hit. And the second hit is also a launcher. On, on normal hit. And not many people know this. Because this is so situational and random. <laughs> so once again, it's an alright move to throw out once in a while for variety. Then she has a uh, garland, kick, garland kick combo. This is her... This is her one of her wall enders, especially against small characters. Because against small characters, wasting one two one plus two will not work. For example, on Elisa, so you have to use this one as a wall ender. Also, when you hit the opponent with the first two hits, you can hit confirm it and just finish the string. It is good to delay it even on hit because you get a tiny bit of uh, you get you get more damage if you delay it. There it is, 17. And if you don't delay it, it's 11. So it's always good to delay it on hit. And the third hit is also really launch punishable, but it has pushback. It's around minus 20 on block, so many times the opponent can just run up to you and punish you anyway. Don't use this very often, if at all. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention that forward 1 plus 2, I mean forward 3 plus 4, um, it's good for spiking the opponent in combos, like for example after after short combos or after a wall break, a floor break, you spike them and you get a you get a ground hit or you get a mix up if they side roll stuff like that. Mm. What else would I say about this? Oh yeah, um, when you do back turn combos, short ones, and you spec with forward 3 plus 4, you get a guaranteed down 3 on opponents. Then she has down forward 2. This is her 16 frame launcher and 16 frame punisher. It's on save. It's around minus 10 or minus 11. Not sure right now. And it has amazing range. It can punish even Law's Wastening 2, which has lots of pushback uh, on block. Um, it's also used as a wall carry in juggles. Let's say in a juggle like this. So that you could get the back turn ender. And this is the only time you want to go into back turn stance after down for two with pressing back. You do down for two and press back. You never want to do down for two back uh, when you're just throwing out down for two randomly. Because you're gonna get punished for it. Yeah very heavily. And also down forward 2 has slight tracking to Lily's right. 
so especially if you have lots of frame advantage, it might clip people that are trying to sidestep to Lily's right. Mm. Not much else to say about this. It's a really good launcher. But uh, as I said, Lily doesn't have safe launchers. Oh, also, this is one of those down forward twos that launch even crouching opponents. So you can use this as, as a mid against people that like to duck. And you are feeling really confident and you know they're going to duck and you want to really punish them heavily for ducking. You do down forward too. And she is down for a 3, plus 3 on block, and about 20 frames fast. It's linear, but it's a really important move for Lily, because of the plus frames on block, and it forces Crouch on hit and on block. Also a counter hit launcher, yada yada yada. I talk about this move very often. So important. It's, it's about plus 8 or plus 9 on normal hit and forces crouch. So you have lots of options after this. You might do another down forward 3 if you know the opponent is going to respect you and they're going to block. To keep up your pressure, you can do down 3, course of 4, 3 plus 4, anything you want to do. Or frame traps. Maybe even a down forward too, if you know they're going to block low. And that's it for this move. Down forward 4 4. Um, this is a 15 frames fast string. Uh, down forward 4 is a safe mid, but the frames are not amazing. It's like minus 8 or minus 7 on block, so it really kills... It mostly kills your offense and momentum if the opponent blocks this. The good thing is that it has a really low hit box once again. It might hit opponents at the side roll or stay on the ground in some situations. It works really well as an Oki tool against bears, for example. Mm. The good thing about this move is that it has the extension, which is not amazing on its own, because it's like minus 15, and it's really easy for the opponent to block this. It's natural only on counter hit. And you can counter hit confirm this. When you counter hit uh, the opponent with down forward 4, you see the screen shaking, unlike on normal hit. And this is how you know that you can finish the screen. And you have all the time in the world to finish the screen. Because even on full delay, it will connect. Um, on normal hit, of down forward 4 or, or on block, you can finish the string occasionally to discourage people from pressing buttons after down forward 4 and catch them off guard. Once again, a really situational string. Uh, uh, unless it's a counter hit. Um, not sure if I mentioned this already, but it does track very well. Well, not very well, because it can be sidewalked. Um, tracks well to Lily's right. And I love using this as a frame trap after quarter circle ball at 3 plus 4. Because you can counter hit confirm uh, the low. And um, it's good also because it's a knee, so it's unparryable. And most importantly, when you have such frame advantage, it tracks to both sides. Opponents with regular sidesteps will not be able to sidestep down forward 4 after quarter circle forward 3 plus 4 to either side. But of course, Lily has the best sidestep in the game, so 
Lily can sidestep it, actually. But, you know, normal characters cannot. Uh, Alright. Then she has her flips. The annoying flips down forward 3 plus 4. And this move has <laughs> tremendous range, as you can see. And sometimes it clips people that try to sidestep. Sometimes people can step this easily, sometimes they get clipped. Uh, Tekken 7 hitboxes. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Um, the Punisher for this backflip is not so simple. If you if you hold down back or back, uh, the opponent can get a crouch jab on you and that's it. That's all they can get. But you can crush the the jab uh, with finishing the string. Lily will jump over the, over the crouch jab, and that's basically how you use the extension. Uh, she can jump over the crouch jab also with back turn 3 plus 4. Two. So that's one strategy for Lily. Uh, if you know, if you think the opponent is going to try uh, high jabs, uh, you can do something like down four or back turn sweep to crush the jabs. Once again, very risky and very situational. Mm. Oh yeah, the extension can be floated with jabs and other quick folks or even sidestep. So yeah. Don't use this <laughs> very often. As I said, primarily you want to use the extension and back turn equals four for jumping over crouch jabs. Down one, two, four. This is her one of her tailspin moves. Uh, it's not her most damaging or best tailspin, but it is really important because of its consistency. In combos, for example, forward for 2-4, uh, the 4 will many times whip off axis, and the only reliable follow-up is down to 4, which will hit every single time. So that's why Lily needs this tailspin. As a move in the neutral, or a string in the neutral, it's not good, because the second hit is high. And, and the hits are not natural. Um, the first hit, down 3, I mean down 1, <laughs> um, is an alright low poke, not amazing, and I would not recommend using this over her other lows, but it is neutral on normal hit, and you can hold down for her to go into full crouch and do some shenanigans, like down four or full crouch down forward one to confuse the opponent even more and it is really linear as well and uh, it looks like it high crushes but the move is so slow it's like 18 frames fast uh, that the high crush is not immediate many times your opponent will still be able to Interrupt the down one with jabs. Not not an amazing low poke. Mm. And she is down to two. Down to two, four, and down to two, three. This is 16 frames fast, the first hit. Uh, the second hit is a high and. Uh, it's unsafe. The first hit is safe on block, but it's like minus 6 or minus 7, so once again, not amazing frames for a poke. And it's neutral on hit. Every hit of these strings can be really delayed. Can be delayed for a really long time. 
The first two hits are natural on normal hit, but yeah, it is high and it can be ducked. The extensions are not amazing. The mid is minus 17 on block. The high is only like minus 1, but it is a high, so you can get ducked. I've seen Lily players using Matterhorn setups after this because it's only minus one on block. Once again, I do not recommend using shenanigans like that. It's really risky. If you really want to make use of this move, then just sidestep afterwards and will punish your opponent. Now, the good thing about down two is that it has some tracking to Lily's right. So it's not bad to throw out once in a while, especially as a tracking move. Hmm. Alright, down three, her best slow poke. Best slow poke, hands down. It is grounded on from every angle. It's only minus 11 or 12 on block, so it cannot be launched. And it is only minus one, I mean uh, plus one on hit, so the frames on hit are not amazing and you cannot really continue your offense, but it's great for harassing your opponent, even at mid-range, since Lily's legs are really long and she's gonna hit, hit the opponent. And she also sort of jumps in even closer to the opponent after the move. Uh, as you can see, she's a little closer to the opponent than she was before doing the move. Um, I don't know why, but many people say this is not a really good low poke, but I think it is. The range is what makes it amazing, and also the tracking. It has good tracking to Lily's left, and some tracking to Lily's right as well. It's a really good move. I, I'm not mad at it. Um, opponents are never safe uh, at mid-range. You can always throw out a down 3. Uh, then she has... Down 1 plus 2. Matterhorn. Uh, yeah, this is her panic move. Minus 17 on block. At least minus 17 on block. Uh, did I just say down 1 plus 2? It's down 3 plus 4. <laughs> uh, the range is really bad and it has zero tracking. You basically use this as a panic move or as a punisher, a with punisher or block punisher against moves that are really minus because the juggle is really juicy afterwards. Mm. The hitbox of Matterhorn is really strange. Uh, it's Sometimes it crushes even mids and even highs very often. But then you have Electrics, Electric and God Fist, and for some reason Matterhorn does not crush Electrics even though they are highs. Matterhorn never ever ever punish, I mean uh, goes under Electrics. It's really strange. I like using this uh, after a sidestep as well for a punish or a panic move. And I'm sure you've seen online Lily players doing sidestep in the Matterhorn. It, ha it has a lot. It has lots of evasion because she goes so low. You know what I've seen before? Let me show you. Aww. Let's do this. Lily can go under the the homing move after quarter circle four three plus four with Matterhorn, but only if you sidestep before that. Hmm, does it not work anymore? I'm pretty sure this worked before. Oh, 
Well, that's strange. Whatever. This worked in Tekken Tag 2. And I remember this working in Tekken 7 as well. Maybe they, they fixed the hitboxes. Whatever. My point is that sometimes you can sight that Matterhorn to evade stuff that is not supposed to be. Um, you know, like, you can you can sight that Matterhorn and go under strings. Um, but whereas a regular Whereas a regular sidestep would not work as an evasive tool. Alright, then she has down back 3. And as of season 2, this is a homing move. Not sure why they decided to make this a homing move. Um, it is good that Lily has more homing moves, but down back 3 is not an amazing move. I'll tell you in a second why. Alright, so Lily's down back 3 is like minus 9 on block. And it's really slow. So when the opponent blocks this move, um, your, moment your momentum is killed. So it's slow. Um, it has bad frames. I have, I have, I have no idea why would anyone use this as a homing move instead of quarter to forward three plus four. Both moves even go under highs, but it is true that down back three is does a much better job at crushing highs. It crushes even electrics very re reliably. It's also a counter hit launcher. And you get free hits on normal hit. You get a free down free or a flip, a storm, or Oki setups. And at the wall, you can even uh, turn this into a juggle. As you can see, it juggles at the wall, so it's really situational. Um, what did I want to say? So yeah, I would use this as an as a defensive tool against Mishimas when they are when they like to use electrics against me. Many times they get counter hit by down back three, but beware of the range; it's really bad. You will get backdashed easily if you aren't care if you aren't careful. And as you can see, she recovers really slow uh, on lift, so you will get launched. Um, in combos, I like to use this move as a tailspin when I get a high launch near the wall, but not near enough for a wall spec like like this. This is how I use down back 3 in combos. Okay, then she has down back 4. This is her sweep. Really slow. It's death on block. It is homing, so it's, it's um, impossible to step this. But the range is horrible. The opponent can easily backdash this. And also it goes under a lot of stuff, it crushes highs, it crushes even mids sometimes, many times. So you can use this as a panic move if you want to risk it for the biscuit. Um, in Tekken Tag 2, uh, this used to be only a counter hit launcher and it was much faster and I really preferred the move that way. It, it had more uses than this version of down back 4. I liked using this at the wall because in the open it has crap range but at the wall the opponent has nowhere to backdash so I would do something like uh, uh, something like down forward 3 into down back 4 and I got my 
plus prime plus five frame advantage and and I could continue my offense. Now you can still do this at the wall and get a juggle, but you know your opponent might block this and then you're dead. Then she has down back three plus four. This is another seeable low that is very, very launch punishable. It's also really linear. Uh, it's so easy to sidestep this. The range is, is really good. And it high crushes. It, uh, it high crushes pretty well, mainly jabs. And it is a counter hit launcher. So. The way I like to use this move in the open is just, you know, randomly against opponents that are weak against lows or after a frame advantage. For example, after Waston in 1 2 or 1 2. Um, many times Lily is too slow, so even at plus 8 frame advantage, um, most stuff that Lily does can be interrupted. And many opponents will attempt to jab in between. And in this case, down back three plus four will crush the jabs. And that's how that's how I like to use this move. Uh, sometimes uh, she gets some okizemi after this. She gets something like uh, down uh, down three full crouch down three or while standing two or full crouch down forward one. I explained the Oki situation uh, already in a previous video, but I'll just say this. At the wall she gets a better Oki a little bit. Also, uh, this is really good against bears, because if you do full crouch down forward one against bears after down back three plus four, or large characters, not just bears, uh, full crouch down forward one even hits grounded, so it's pretty much guaranteed against large characters after down back 3 plus 4. Uh, Alright. Ah, oh, yeah, back one. This is 17 frames fast. 17 frames fast, mid. Mmm. On its own, it's alright. It looks like it high crushes, but it doesn't, which is a bummer. I wish this was a high crush. Um, it tracks a little bit to Lily's right. The extension tracks to Lily's left. Both hits are natural on normal hit for a decent amount of damage. And she, go, she can go to do glide with pressing forward, and in this case, Lily is at plus one. Whereas, if you only do back one on its own, Lily is at like um, uh, minus five. Unlock, I mean. I explained back one in, a, in another video already. She can go to do glide for more stuff. Uh, she can do do glide cancels to confuse the opponent, and it's really good in combos where you can loop back ones together. And back one four is probably her best wall carry move in joggles. So this is going to be your one of your main wall carry juggle enders. Also the extension is minus 11 and can be delayed, so if people like pressing buttons you can you can delay the, the second hit and and catch them off guard, you know? But on full delay this is not natural anymore. As you can see the opponent can block, whereas on non-delay it's natural. This is also one of those strings where some people claim they can hit confirm it. Might be possible, you can sort of feel it uh, connecting, 
but once again it's really difficult and unreliable for hit confirming. Alright. Oh, also back one for is really good as a whiff punisher as at the wall because of its its damage and how far it wall splits. See, wall splits from really far. All right, now she has back to one. This string is 13 frames fast. The good thing is that it's high mid, so you might catch opponents that like to fuzzy, fuzzy guard you and randomly duck and lost and they punish you. The mid will will catch them. But then again, the range is so bad. It sucks. So you have to be really close to the opponent to make this connect. Also, the second hit has some tracking, so you might catch people sidestepping you. Um, on block, you can still float hop kicks if you go into back turn stands with jabs. And you have access to her back turn mix ups if you want to. But yeah, these can be interrupted. In that case, you can, in that case, you can finish the string with a plus two, which is like minus twelve on block. In my opinion, playing around with this string is not worth it, and since all of her options are really punishable for, uh, in many cases, for a really small reward, it's just too risky. Not worth it. But sometimes I like to do back two into, I mean back two one into back turn down four for a high crush. Not, not bad to use once in a while, but yeah, it's not amazing. Also, if you want to, you can use this as a 13 frame punisher sometimes if you really want to, and you really want access to those back turn mix ups, you can use it as a 13 frame punisher because it also has good frame advantage on hit. It's like plus seven or plus eight. Easter rabbit, eh, it's whatever. This is just a gimmick. Uh, it does low crush, maybe even high crushes in some situations. So this can get you out of sticky situations sometimes. She has access to do glide. Uh, you can style on your opponent with this, and she has the same from back to stance as well. And she has access to two moves. Uh, back to three, which is a low sweep that is like minus fifteen on block, so it can be launched. Um, it deals good damage. It might be quite useful against characters that don't, that don't have a 15 frame wall standing launcher. You might want to risk it sometimes. And she also has 4, which is a mid. Uh, you can use this as a mix up, but yeah, your opponent can step you. Not amazing, it's mostly just a gimmick. Maybe at the wall you could you could use this as a mix up, but then again she has much better mix ups even at the wall. Um, yeah, back one plus two is a panic move. Um, this is like minus fourteen on block. So you can get launched. Um, this is supposed to be a backswing blow, but it does not evade a whole lot of stuff. Maybe some jabs. You might use this against Steve or Horang once once in a while as a as a panic move. Not not really amazing. I'm not impressed with this move. Hmm. Back 3 plus 4 is her manual back turn stance. Okay, from back turn stance she has 1, 2. 
the jabs, they're really fast, but they can be ducked. Uh, I like to... I mean, I think the main purpose of these jabs is for combos and uh, after forward forward for and counter hit where the back turn jabs are guaranteed. Like that. And that's pretty much how you use them. Much, mu not much to say other than that. Uh, back turn 2, very important move for Lily. 15 frames fast, safe, it's like minus 5. And it is a counter hit launcher that tracks super well to Lily's right. A weak side. I like to do back turn 2, especially after uh, forward forward 4 on normal hit. Because forward forward 4 is plus 4, so back turn 2 will will counter hit most of your uh, opponent's attempts of retaliation for a combo. So you use this as a tracking move and a safe mid and a counter hit launcher. And it gets even better at the wall. It wall splats from pretty far. And this is going to be your main mid for Lily's 50-50 from back turn stance at the wall. Not 1 plus 2, but back turn 2. You use back turn 2 at the wall, okay? As a mid. Because back turn 1 plus 2 is not safe. Back turn 2 is safe. Mm. Back turn 4, 3 plus 4. This is used only as a juggle ender. This is her best juggle ender, and you should use this whenever possible as a juggle ender because she gets good, she gets good OK. Like, uh, I don't know, a down 4 for example, or her back turn mix up. I already talked about this before in another video. In the neutral, don't, don't use this. Um, it goes under stuff, that's true. You can crush something with, with this. But even if you finish the stream, you can get jabbed in between for a lot of damage. So it's really risky for um, such small reward. Back turn 1 plus 2. This is your main mid from, from back turn stance together with back turn 2. Normal hit launcher. Um, it is minus 10 on block, but your opponent will mostly get only a crouch jab unless they have a 10 frame while standing punisher. For, for example, Lee does. Mm. What can I say about this? Uh, it is linear, unfortunately. Really linear. Uh, you can use this as a pin trap after forward forward 4 into back 2 stance. That's how most Lily players use this move. But even so, you can be stepped. Um, so yeah, use this as your main mid from back turn stance. Especially for her back turn 50-50. Also, if you get a shallow hit with back turn 1 plus 2, you cannot combo off of this. Like... You only get a free stomp afterwards. See, you cannot connect a crouch jab. So, keep that in mind. Also, at the wall, you get a different juggle. At the wall, you get down back one into full crouch, down forward one as a combo. It's, it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. That's why. That's also. A reason why you want to use back turn 2 at the wall instead. Mm. Also, on bears, and I think a couple of other large characters as well, you cannot connect the crouch jab after back turn 1 plus 2, and you need to do back turn 1 plus 2 into 3 2 instead as a juggle. 
So, yeah, keep that in mind as well. Back turn 3 plus 4 2. Uh, as I said before, you use this as a low crush against crouch jabs when people try to punish the flip. This is the main use for this move. It has really good range. It's also a mid, a safe mid. The first hit is a safe mid that um, hits grounded. So. If you want to do back turn mix-ups jugg after juggles, for example, you end your juggle with flips and you know your opponent is going to either stay on the ground or stand up and block close, and you want to stay kind of safe and you don't want to risk back turn 1 plus 2, um, I like to use 3 plus 4 instead as an Okizami tool. Uh, but it does not hit side goal, unfortunately. The, t the 2 is natural, even on normal hit. But the whole stream is minus 11 on block, so it is not safe. And also, you can delay the second hit a little bit if you want to play mind games with your opponent. And just like back turn 2, the second hit is a counter hit launcher. So yeah, you can you can catch people mashing buttons after 2 plus 4. Hmm. What do we have next? Oh yeah, back turn down, down 3, 4. It's a low mid string, and I like to use back turn down 3, 4, especially at the end of the round, where my opponent um, may expect me to do a low, and, and they, they're gonna block the low and try to punish me, and then I finish the string and catch them and kill them. The mid is minus 13 on block, unfortunately, so it is risky. It does hit grounded, and the first hit has good tracking to Lily's right, and also it's a high crush. So you can also use this as a high crush. For example, after 4 4 4, you do down 3 for a high crush. Lots of evasive moves for Lily. And the whole stream is natural on counter hit. But you cannot counter hit confirm this, nor can you, uh, nor you can delay the second hit. Impossible to delay. You have to commit to this. Um, the good thing is that at the wall, um, it's a really good Okizemi tool. Uh, look at this. If you do this at the wall, both hits will hit the grounded opponent for lots of damage. So yeah, you start intimidating your opponent with factor mix-ups. And once they're once they get scared and they don't want to deal with your mix-ups anymore, and they just stay on the ground, you start doing down 3-4. But uh, yeah. This string has many uses, even though the frames on it uh, are not amazing. Mm. Even at the wall, if they expect a low, for example, if you want to mix them up with her back turn mix-ups at the wall, and they expect a sweep, and they start, they start blocking low, uh, you can do down 3-4, and they may block the low once again, but the mid uh, will lost but them. So yeah, it's not a bad string, even though the frames are not amazing. Also, the first hit on normal hit uh, is like minus 15. So be careful with using this as a poke on its own. On counter hit, um, 
Okay, I forgot. Uh, on normal hit, this is like minus two. So it does not give her frame advantage. On counter hit, though, it's like plus four or plus five. And the opponent is in a crouching animation. So this is how you know that your down three was a counter hit. And that you have your frame advantage and you can continue your offense. Mm. Back turn down to plus four. This is your main low from back turn stance. Another homing sweep. It's slow and can be seeable. And you don't get a full juggle in most situations. Unfortunately. And it staggers on block. See, so it's death on block, basically. But you need to use this uh, if you want to make your opponents uh, start ducking when against the release back turn stance. Um, in most cases, I just like to pressure my opponents with her back turn moves and throw out the sweep just once in a while to make them scared and make them know that you still have this sweep. Don't overuse this, don't abuse it. It's there to be used only once in a while. Also you can you can um, pressure your opponents with the mids for <laughs> several rounds or matches and when you need a comeback you, that's when you can start doing the sweep instead for big damage. Also after this combo you get some OP. The flip will uh, relaunch uh, the opponents even if they stay on the ground. Even if they don't want to stand up, the flip will refloat your opponent. But then again this can, this can be side rolled. Gee, I forgot to mention something about 4 triple 4. At the ball, she gets good Okizami. Uh, if you end the combo with 4 with 3 plus 4, you, you can uh, get stuff with down 4 4 4. This will pretty much hit your opponent in every case, unless they stay, stay on the ground. That's why it's a pretty good setup at the wall. Mm. All right, next move. Oh wait, I keep forgetting about stuff. Um, in some cases, you can get a full launch after this sweep, but it is really range dependent. So, uh, if you do down three plus four on its own, Lily stays in back turn stance. But if you do down three plus four forward, she she turns around, and this is going to be important because you can pick up for a juggle with down one two four. But as I said, it depends on range, and uh, you can get the perfect spacing for the pickup uh, if the opponent side rolls to your right, I think. Yep. After a side roll right, after a wall standing 4 on hit, you get the perfect spacing for a full launch with her sweep. This is just a situational uh, trick for Lily. Alright. Back 1 plus 4 is one of her homing moves. It's useless, it's slow, linear, so easy to step this. You can use this for memeing around on your opponent. I have really funny setup at the wall with this. So let's say you get a wall splat and your opponent loves get up kicks and you know they're going to do get up kicks. You can do 
Oh, wait a second. You can do an unblockable to counter hit to get up here. And yeah, that's pretty much the only use I know for the unblockable. Mm. Let's get away from the wall now. Uh, up three. It's a launcher on normal hit, but it's so bad. It's so bad. The range is horrible. It's slow. It does high crush and low crush a little bit, but even then, um, no matter what you do, your opponent can punish up three. If you decide to do up three three, your opponent can interrupt you. If you decide to do up three only, that's unsafe as well. Even uh, going into do glide does not make it safe. Don't use this outside of juggles. In juggles, this is used after stuff like lost ending 2 or sometimes after a down back 4 or mid, mid combo after stuff like after stuff like uh, an early tailspin with down 1, 2, 4 you can dash in and do up 3, 3, 4 lots of damage so this is just a tool for this is just a combo filler, basically. Um, yeah, she she has this whole string right here. Useless, completely useless. Even in combos, it's useless. Mm. Up three plus four. Okay, this is like. Lily's only save launcher. But the range is horrible. And your opponent doesn't even have to do anything and it's going to whiff in the open. Yes. New Lily players love using this as a panic move. Don't use it as a panic move. Uh, because of its horrible range. And it still has its uses. I like using this as an Okizemi tool, especially at the wall. Okay, so... Uh, let me set up the dummy. Uh, this hits grounded. This hits the opponent grounded. And it can also catch wake up kicks and toe kicks. So, if I suspect my opponent doing wake up kicks or staying on the ground, I'm gonna do up 3 plus 4. And in ma many cases, it works. And so. Let me show you. Like, there we go. And then you continue your combo with standing 4 or 1 plus 2. So yeah, it has its uses. Also, um, I saw on Twitter a tech roll catch with this. Uh, it catches a uh, quick side roll to, I think it was to the left, I'm not sure anymore. Let's try this. God, I don't remember the setup. What? Okay. Um, I don't remember the setup, but... Um, it was something like this. Maybe it worked at, uh, against large characters. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find it later. Up forward to... 
Uh, this is supposed to be evasive, but it's not really evasive. Even a side step will evade more. And it's minus 10 on block. It had horrible range. Uh, it's not a good move. And there is absolutely no reason for using this. Uh, I wish this was at least safe on block, but it's not. Up for 3, this is Lily's hop kick. This hop kick has good range for a hop kick. And it's also her 15 frame punisher, but yeah, her down forward 2 has more range than her hop kick. Even though down forward 2 is uh, slower. Um, the good thing about this hop kick is that. Um, it has some tracking to Lily's left, so you can use this as a tracking move, especially against people that like to step to your left. And in some cases, this this is unsteppable to bo both sides. For example, after forward four two, your opponent cannot step at all. Uh, unless it's Lily or some other characters, they can step, but yeah, it's hard to step this when you have fame advantage. But then, for example, after quarter circle forward 3 plus 4, your opponent can still sidestep uh, the hop kick. And then you will die because you get it punished. Um, I think that's it for the hop kick. Nothing else to say here. Mm. Okay, before I move on to her wall bounce, I'd like to talk about a 4. This is another hop kick. This is like minus 12 on block, but it does have pushback. As you can see. Um, it can be used as a panic tool. Also, it's 14 frames fast, unlike a forward 4, which is uh, 15 frames fast. But this launch is only on counter hit. So, yep, you use this as a defensive tool, not as an offensive tool at all. The range is horrible. Only use this as, as a defensive tool. You can also do up back four if you want to stay safe and avoid the opponent's punishment but then again uh, if you do this you will not get a launch on counter hit um okay ball bounce up forward four three useless it's slow it is safe on block i mean both hits are safe and natural on normal hit but uh, there's just no reason for using this outside of a low crush maybe but even then I would rather just use a hop kick um, you might use this if you're really comfortable in the match and you want to you want to try new things that's the only way I would use this um, there's no reason for using this over a hop kick or down for 3 or other mids. It's also like minus 9 on block. Not good, not good. I wish her forward 4 was a wall bounce instead. Mm, okay. Up forward 3 plus 4, 3. Uh, up forward 3 plus 4 is a hop knee. Uh, so the good thing is that it cannot be parried. Also her homing move forward 3 cannot be parried, so that's another bonus for this homing move. Um, but let's get back to up forward 3 plus 4. Um, it's 15 frames fast, it is linear, but it's not bad to throw out once in a while, especially against opponents that love low pokes. It's safe on block and you are left in the opponent's face, so it's good as an advancing as... <sighs> I 
can't talk anymore. It's good as an advancing mid. Uh, even though the mids on block, I mean, <laughs> even though the frames on block are not amazing. It's like minus six, minus seven. It's it's safe, but not good. Um, this has a couple of extensions. Also, um, what happens to me sometimes is that when I do up forward 3 plus 4 and my opponent side sidewalks, somehow I I end up in back turn stance. Like I do up forward 3 plus 4 and I end up behind them very far in back turn stance. So even though I whip the attack, it's impossible for the opponent to whip punish me. So that makes the move kind of safe uh, on with. The same thing happens to me sometimes with Batman 3 plus 4. You just flip away from your opponent. It's like, Lily, where are you going? Yeah, you just end up flipping away from your opponent. Um, okay, so let's get back to this. Um, this has a couple of extensions. Up 4 to 3 plus 4. 3 is a high, it can be docked. The good thing is that this is natural on normal hit, and it is really hit confirmable. You have enough time to hit confirm the high after the mid. Also, uh, the extension is neutral on on hit. It gives no frame advantage, and the first hit is like plus two or plus three on hit. Not amazing, but. Um, the extensions give you mental frame advantage. So you can hit confirm this and also you can delay the second hit. So for example if your opponent blocks the first hit and you and they start mashing after it, you can counter hit the, the opponent with the extension. This happens a lot. It might be useful at the wall. But then again, it's really situational because she has much better mids uh, to use at the wall. And in general, she has better mids than this one. Okay, then she has up forward 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4. Uh, this is supposed to be a mix up to the high extension, but it's really bad. Uh, I mean, it's Matterhorn, uh, you're gonna get launched if the opponent blocks this. It will crush highs. Uh, but yeah, just try not using this in the open. It's too much risk. And smart opponents will not press buttons anyway. But, but, this is really useful in combos. Uh, if you get behind your opponent, for example, you sidewalk them and you end up behind them, you can launch them for so much damage with up forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4. This is guaranteed on back turn opponents. So, yeah, that's the main use for this streams punishing uh, back turn opponents. Forward uh, 4, 2, this is your power crush. This is such a bad power crush. You can't really use this as a panic move because it's so slow and it has a forward forward input. Let's say you're at the wall getting pressured by Horang or something. You don't have enough time to input forward forward too. Even though it is a normal hit launcher and it is like um, minus 17 on block. Mm. I like using this in the open sometimes, if I'm feeling confident and I know my opponent is going to press a button and try to get in and close to me, I'm gonna throw out the forward forward 2 and crush them and watch them. Another way in which I like using her power crush is, uh, for example, after a down for 3 or, or jabs or 4 to 3 plus 4 
when there's a high chance that my opponent is going to either try to interrupt me because Lily is so slow or try to step me because Lily is so linear. Since it is a forward forward motion, you can kind of delay the two, like you can input forward forward and then input two, and this way the power crush will gain some tracking. So you cover both options with this. You cover opponents that would try to retaliate and op opponents that try to sidestep. Uh, in both cases they will get launched. Well, okay, not sidestep, because your opponent gets sidestep and cancel the sidestep and block again, and then they will block the power crush and then you're dead. But if they commit to a sidewall, it's going to kill them. Or if they are one of those really spastic players that just like throwing out pokes and every single time they sidestep into another poke, down forward one, sidestep, down forward... Uh, Sides the downfall one, and you know, you get tired of this, so you throw out a, a power crush, and yeah, that shuts them off very quickly. Um, okay, that's how I like to use this. Forward for three. This is an alright poke, and yeah. it low crushes, and it is super linear and floatable with jabs. But if you can manage to make the opponent block this, it can be a good uh, tool for getting in. It has tremendous range, look at it, and you are left in the opponent's face. I already covered this uh, move in another video. And basically, on its own, it's minus 12 unlock. If you enter do glide, this is safe. So, once again, like after back one, you always want to enter do glide and do something like a do glide cancel or do do glide moves or a sidestep into whatever. Um, oh, she also has the ext the extension for four two plus four two plus four. This is natural only on counter hit. And then you get a uh, feet ground hit as well. Um, this is not natural on normal hit, but the second hit is safe on block. So, in many cases, you want to throw it out sometimes, because why not? The opponent can sidestep the second hit, however. They cannot interrupt it, but they can sidestep it. So, be careful. Also, for some reason, because I think it's because of the animation, like um, the, the animation of forward forward 3 makes Lily go really low when she enters Dubai. A uh, much lower than, um, than a Dubai after back 1. So, um, if you enter Dubai after forward forward 3, she crushes more stuff than after a back one. So, I don't know, I think in many cases it's much better for you to do do glide moves after forward forward 3 than after back one. But back one is still good and you want to do do glide cancels. Just not throw out moves uh, so often. Okay. Root of Evil. What can I say? This is Lily's best slow together with down 3. Um, some people say this is unseeable. Some people say this is seeable because it's, it's like on the edge of being unseeable. It's like 22 or 23 frames fast at most. It is linear, but once again, this has a really funky hitbox and sometimes it randomly tracks the opponent. It's like, yeah, I, I did jabs and many times my opponent can sidewalk the Rito Evil. And sometimes 
Rudo be able to track them. It's really weird. But yeah, um, use this move a lot if you can. Um, it's only minus 12 on block, plus 4 on hit. You are left in the opponent's face. Yeah. It has tremendous range once again. Um, also, you get to do stuff like forward 1 plus 2 or back turn 1 plus 2. You have many options. I already talked about forward forward 4 in many videos. And then you get guaranteed back turn 1, 2 on counter hit. Um, also, this is going to be your main stomp after moves such as forward forward. After moves such as forward 4 or, or 1 plus 2 on hit, it deals a good chunk of damage, more than the flip or, or down 3 or other ground hitting moves. Mm. Okay, Lashing Iris. Forward 4 1 plus 2. This is a new move in Tekken 7. Um, it's not that good. It's still really slow, so you can get interrupted easily. The hitbox is also not that good. It looks like it should have more range than it actually does. Um, but it's not bad to throw out once in a while. Um, if you do one spin, mm, this is like minus 9 on block. Not amazing at all. But then again, it does have more range than forward 3 does. Also, if you do 2 spins, this is plus 5 on block. But with pushback. Yeah, some pushback. Um, it might be good to throw out once in a while. Especially when you know that your opponent is going to respect you. And and you want a mid that is possum block and is homing. It's good. Not amazing, but it's alright. Mm. After three spins, it's an unblockable and it's still mid. Many people think that after three spins, it becomes a high. It does not. And you have your classic tech roll catch after this um, like you do a, a tailspin move in a juggle and then do the unblockable to catch tech rollers but even tech rollers can parry the unblockable if they have a parry for example Geese or Asuka or Paul they can or they can they can parry this you can play in mind games with them and mix this up uh, like sometimes you do two hits uh, in the open, sometimes you do three hits. It's really risky and it is a gimmick though. Keep that in mind. Forward, forward, three plus four. Um, the, it's another mid that low crushes, but it's really linear. It has good range. Sometimes I like to use this, uh, I like to throw this out once in a while when I think my opponent is gonna press something and I want to keep them in check. Even at the wall, for example. At least it wall splits and it is safe on block. Um, the recovery is really bad on wave. That's what makes this move really risky. And it's also linear. Some people say they they can use this as a mix-up for forward forward four. Uh, it might work, I'm not sure. Sometimes it works even for me. But yeah, it's not a true mix-up. The, the animation is sort of similar. You can also use forward 4-3 forward as a mix-up with forward 4. Some people claim this works for them as a mix-up. Um, Alright, 
that's it for this move. Oh, uh, glide, yeah. Uh, Dew glide is really scratch dash, basically. Well, it's not really a crouch dash because you cannot move like this. She has a sneak dash instead. You cancel the dew glide with pressing up and you do another one. This is called a snake dash. Yeah, that's it. Um Okay, um Sometimes she can crush stuff with this. Um, she has another technique for going into do glide, and that's okay. So the regular way of doing do glide is down, down, forward, forward. But you can also do down, down, forward only, and you still get do glide. And this way. For some reason, Dual Glide crushes more than uh, when you do it the regular way. Or with down, down, forward, forward. I have no proof of this, but uh, it does, trust me. It crushes more. Um, okay, you have uh, moves like Dual Glide 1, Dual Glide 2. But if you do. The do, do, if you do do glide with the down down forward method, you gain access to full crouch moves, like full crouch down forward one, and wall standing moves, uh, like wall standing two. And this is really important for wall carries because you're gonna use wall standing two as a wall carry very often after combos. And it's easier than just dashing in the opponent's face and then doing a down forward one. I mean, uh, boss and two. <laughs> mm. Like that. Um, it's also useful for when you you get a wall spot uh, during the juggle. Let me think of a juggle that is long enough. And you want to do Wastening Wall Plus 2 as an ender. You do down, down, forward into Wastening Wall Plus 2 as an ender. Mm. Okay. So now we have her true do glide moves. Do glide. 1 2, which is her quarter circle forward 1 2, in other words. Uh, yeah, I talked about this uh, in many cases already in other videos. Um, this will go under some highs as well, sometimes even mids. But once again, for some reason, it does not crush electrics. So do not try going under electrics with this. Um, it has awesome range and it is an elbow, so it's unparryable. And you can use this as a poke for getting in to your opponent's space and in their face. It is unsafe, it's like minus 12 or minus 11. She has the extension too. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the second hit is a counter hit launcher. Like so. And you can delay the second hit for a really long time. So you can you can um, you can catch people that are trying to press buttons after quarter six forward one with two for counter hit launch. But the second hit is minus 14, so characters that have 14 free launchers will launch you for this. Uh, you can also go into backturn stance with holding back, 
you do quadriscopo with one two and then hold back. You don't do quadriscopo with one and two back, but you have to press quadriscopo with one two to two back. Um, this cancel is launch punishable. Your opponent can hop kick you, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, Opponents that like to do jabs or other highs uh, against the cancel uh, can get crushed with stuff like the back turn down four uh, or the back turn sweep. Also, there's one love book. I think I forgot to mention this when talking about her back turn stance. Back turn down four. Uh, this is. Almost the same as her down 4 from neutral. Down 4 from neutral is 12 frames fast and has good tracking to Lily's right. And it is minus on normal hit. It's like minus 1 or minus 2. Doesn't give Lily frame advantage. It, it is a really good high crushing poke. It high crushes immediately. And it has really good range. Due to... Lily's long legs and from back turn stands she gets basically the same thing except this version deals a little more damage and it is plus three on hit instead of minus two. Many people do not realize this and they think Lily is at minus frames and they try to jab after the down four. And in this case, a lost and four will work, will work as a frame traps. This works uh, quite well. Um, okay, let's get back to quarter second forward one two. Um, the last thing I would like to say about this that is that it tracks slightly to Lily's right, like really slightly. So at this range, if you want to do a move that tracks slightly to her right, do quarter step forward one. Mm. And also, this is gonna be one of your best with punishers because of its tremendous range, and it wall splits from really far at the wall. Uh, okay, after some wall splats, you can get a re wall splat with something like down forward 2. Oh, yeah, I think I forgot to mention this as well. You, do, you use down forward 2 as your main re wall splat tool after wall splat. Down forward 2 into back turn stance. And then you do her back turn combo, her best wall combo, uh, back turn 4, 3 plus 4. So if you can, you really want to free wall spot your opponent with down forward 2. But after a few moves like 3-1 uh, and forward 2-3 and quarter circle forward 1-2, the wall splat is so good that you can re wall splat your opponent even with forward 2 for a lot of damage. Uh. God damn it. Of course, I'm doing a video, so it's not going to work. Okay, you get the idea. You get a really juicy re wall spot with forward 2 3, and sometimes even be with back 1 4. Like that. Big, big damage. So, yeah, you can get so much damage from quarter square forward 2, I mean uh, 1 2 at the wall. Um, so yeah, use that as a whiff punisher when you can at the wall. And even in the open, it's, it's really good. 
Okay, then she has quarter scroll with 2 1. This is another homing move, mid mid. Um, it is natural on normal hit, but the second hit is minus 11, so unfortunately, this is not safe. Um, also, this is quite fast, it's like 16 frames fast at most. So you can use this as a frame trap sometimes uh, after jabs and lost them in one two, and it seems like the range is much better than after forward three. Oh yeah, definitely much better. And since it since it comes out from do glide, you might high crush uh, a few things with this. Um, the first hit. I think it's minus 10, so it's not safe. And the second hit is def definitely minus 11. It forces crouch and it is plus 5 or plus 6 on normal hit. So that's really good for pressure. Um, the second hit, okay, so like if they block the first hit and you catch them pressing buttons with the second hit. Uh, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get a knockdown for guaranteed follow-ups. So that's that's pretty useful against really impatient opponents. I personally personally do not use this move very often, but I would like to implement this into my game plan somehow. Quarter second forward 3 plus 4, in famous cartwheels, double high, but they block but they um tail on block, so you cannot duck them. Um if you already block the first hit, the second hit cannot be blocked. I mean I mean ducked. <laughs> Sorry. It is homing and really fast. It's like 15 frames fast at, fa at the fastest. Or even 14. Um, this also wall splits for good damage. Uh, and for quite from quite far. And since it comes out from Dewglide, it it has some high crushing. Mm, also low crushing. Um, okay, so you're gonna want to use this move as often as you can for pressure because it's plus six on block. I already explained that I love using down forward four after this. Uh, if the opponent starts ducking this and launching you, that's when you want to start using uh, mids like down forward three. Quarter second forward 2 1, forward 3, and other mids. Uh, Lily does have quite decent mids. Yeah, quarter second forward 2 plus 4. Lily's best pressure tool to get it with down forward 3. I love this move, and every Lily player should love this move. Mmm. Her slash kick. Yeah, it's whatever. According to her frame data, uh, it can be plus on block. Probably depends on range. But in most cases, it's neutral on block. It's whatever. You can use it once upon a time. Also, this can be a good Okizemi tool after forward 2 3. Let me show you. If they try to. Okay. If they try to stand up, for example, you can hit them with the slash kick for big damage. Yeah, it can be an okay tool or a mid to throw out once in a while. That's it. Oh, yeah, and it is a manly slash kick. 
not really feminine at all. Okay, moving on, we have her wall standing moves. Wall standing 1 2 is her 13 frame wall standing punisher plus 8 on hit. So good. Um, but it is mid high and the second hit can be ducked easily and good opponents will duck this. So I do not advise you to use this outside of punishment. Um, once again you can do this um, out of Dewglide with the Dewglide technique I talked about. Um, it has some tracking to Lily's, right? But even then, just don't risk using this as a as a tracking move. Mm, she has a, a low extension. Uh, while while resing 1, 2, 4. After the low, you get guaranteed hits, like a flip, for example. Like so. Or a stomp. Um, also, the, the last hit is a counter hit launcher. It gives you basically the same juggles like down back 4 does. Um, and it's like minus 15 on block. Oh wait, not actually not. It's like minus 14. Um, it's good to throw out once in a while. Um, the last hit, I mean. Um, for example, if you start doing wall standing. One twos as punishers, and you pressure your opponents with brain traps, and they stop pressing buttons, and then you start pressuring with stuff like forward forward four or down forward three again. And these moves are really slow, so even at plus eight, they are interruptible. Sometimes you can finish the string uh, and catch them off guard. And launch, uh, and launch them. So yeah, it can be used as a frame trap or, for example, if you like using lows after wasting um, one two, for example, forward forward four or down back three plus four, but both of these are interruptible after wasting one two. So if you need a chunky low that is uninterruptible, that's when you finish the string. Really situational, but decent. It's not bad. Mm. Another use for this string is um, as a back turn punisher, because once again on back turn, back turned opponents, it's all guaranteed. Plus you get a guaranteed ground hit. That's how you use this as well as a punisher. Mm. All right, boss standing two. This is her 16 frame boss standing launcher. Uh, it is a class one launcher, so you get stuff like up three three afterwards or an up forward neutral four. But I would do up three three more often because it is more consistent of axis than up for neutral four. So try doing up three three whenever you can. Um, it, it's also used um, as a wall carry option, as I mentioned before. It also tracks to Lily's right, even better than wall standing one two does. Also, this has some high crash frames in it. So what I like to do is do stuff like down 4 into wall standing 2. This will catch opponents that try to jab you after the down 4. Um, um, yeah, that's how I like to use this. And it will also catch people that try to step, so you cover two options at once. Unfortunately, it is unsafe. It's minus 12 on block. Um, it has tremendous range, so another 
strategy I like to use with this is doing the down down forward do glide method into water into from really far as a means of getting into your opponent's face. Many times I counter hit them with the Vostening too or crush their jab jabbing attempts or even sometimes mid. So yeah, that's another way of using this. If you are getting impatient and you just want to do something already, this, an this is another method of getting into your opponent's face. Also, this hits grounded in some situations, so it can be used as an ulti tool, for example, after down back people's war. It hits side rollers, not grounded opponents, but side rollers. Or maybe it does hit uh, grounded opponents, I don't remember. Okay, it does hit uh, grounded opponents, but only in this situation. It's really unre unreliable as an Okizemi tool. Uh, Alright, let's move on. Lost time 3. This is another 16 free launcher, but uh, generally speaking, Lost time 2 gives you better juggles, so use that instead. Lost time 3 also has some tracking and also has some crushing, just like Lost time 2. Um, but the problem with Lost time 3 is that it's like really minus on block. It's like minus 20 on block. It does have pushback, some pushback, but it's not really worth the risk. Especially against opponents that have long-ranged punishers. If you're playing against, against someone who has bad punishers, um, then yeah, um, this that might give you some slight advantage. Um, the extension is plus on block, it's like plus 3, I, I don't know, something like that. But it's not really worth it. Can, the opponent can still sidestep it or, mm, or interrupt it. Mm. Does it hit grounded? Well, yeah, it does hit grounded. Uh, yeah, actually, this might be used as an Okizami tool. <laughs> if you're really brave and you know the opponent is going to stay on the ground. Very, very situational. Mm. Okay, full crouch down forward one. Uh, this is another safe mid. It's like 14 or 15 frames fast. Wait, I, yeah, I think it's 14. It's still 14. It always was 14 frames fast. Um, this can be used as your 14 frame full crouch. I mean, lost ending punisher, but then, you, then again, you don't get anything guaranteed afterwards. Your opponent can still back roll avo and avoid any uh, ground hits. So I would rather just use Wastening 2 instead. Wastening 1, 2, I mean. Okay, um, however, this can be a really good pressure tool. It is safe, uh, it's like minus 9 or minus 8, but it's quite fast and I like to, okay, I don't do this, but I've seen a very particular strategy used by Korean Lily players. They do the do glide method with down down forward into full crouch down forward one. Um, and you basically get a safe mid pressure tool with tremendous range and tracking because this way it, it tracks as well. And since it's a do glide animation. You are also high crushing. It's a really sneaky way of getting in to your opponent. And it also wall, wall spots. So 
So yeah, I've seen many boss fights with this uh, in Korean Lily gameplay. Um, another use for this is as an Okizemi tool. For example, after down by 3 plus 4. Uh, this will hit side rolls and people that try to stand up. But it does not hit uh, grounded opponents, unfortunately. Um, but from my testing, it does hit uh, grounded against large characters like bears. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but against bears, down back 3 plus 4 into full charge down forward 1 seems to be guaranteed. Okay, that's it for this move. Now we have her horizon slide. Full crouch down forward 3. Okay, um, I forgot to mention one more thing about her do glide. Another do glide shenanigan. You can do do glide into down back 4. You can do this even after back 1 into do glide or forward for 3 into do glide. Uh, it can mask it can mask the um, the animation of of the sweep. But yeah, good opponents will still block this. Uh, on the right side, this is going to have so much crush crushing. So yeah, once again, you're going to kill Impatient players with this. Um, okay, back to full crouch. Full crouch down for three. Uh, this slow is not that good, <laughs> unfortunately. It's minus um, on hit. It minus two to plus seven. Apparently, it depends on range. Its safeness also depends on range. Don't quote me on this, but I still still but I think that this still works. Let me show you a strategy. Um, I've seen this setup somewhere. Wastening two into down four into full crouch down four three. Apparently this made the full crouch down four three safe on block. Let me test it. Can we punish this? And now I can up it. Oh, whatever. Uh, just test it yourself. Um, okay, back to this fight. This is a counter hit launcher. Uh, if you're close to the opponent, you get to pick up uh, with something like down 1-2. Uh, if you hit this at tip range, you you cannot pick up with uh, down 1-2. Let me see if I can get it. God damn it, it still hits. <laughs> Okay, basically, so sometimes when you counter hit launch with this, you cannot connect one uh, down one two because you are too far away from the opponent. So in that case, sometimes you can pick up the opponent with down four three plus four instead. So you do counter hit launch with down four three into down four three plus four, but this does not work up close. Only at full full. Uh, only at max range, that's what I mean. Also, sometimes this has track this has tracking, sometimes it doesn't. It's a strange move. Like many of Lily's moves. Um, you can do this from do glide as well. You just press, for example, back one into back one forward into Okay, so you do back one forward hold into three. If you do back one forward press into three, you get wall standing three instead. 
Um, Side step three. Oh boy. Um, okay, side step three is an all right uh, move, but most importantly, it is an Okizami tool. It hits grounded and flips over the opponent pretty reliably. But it does not hit side roll because the move itself is so linear. It's so linear. Um, and the frames are not amazing either. It's really slow. And like minus 9 or minus 8 on block, so it kills your pressure if the opponent blocks this. On hit, you get stuff like another side step 3 or dashing 1 plus 2, forward 3 plus 4. Yeah, forward 3 plus 4 is the best follow up in my opinion because you can get a spike into an Okizami situation. And I talked about this as well before. Mm. It's an alright move, it's a safe mid, so yeah, why not throw it out once in a while? But she still has better moves, like down forward 3. Um, I like to use this in one setup, particular particularly at the wall. I do wall spot into four one to back one cancel. Into size up three. This will catch something like get up kicks and it will flip over opponents that stay on the ground. And you can mix this up with lows or other moves. Not amazing, but it can be useful. Mm. Moving on, we have side step bumpers too. Now this, in my opinion, is a much better move than side step 3. It does have really bad range. Um, but it is only minus 1 or minus 2 on block. So once again, this is really specialty, you can sidestep afterwards and punish almost everything. Because this is another one of those moves that don't look like they are only minus 2 on block. So you can sidestep and punish them. Um, it's also a counter hit launcher. Like so. It is linear. Um, I would, I, you can use it in the open if you want to, it has some evasiveness, whatever, the sidestep will still work better as, for evasion. Um, I like to use this at the wall, especially. Mm. Because at the wall, the opponent has no space for backdashing, so you do not you do not have to worry about its bad range. Um, also, since it comes out from sidestep, you might avoid stuff with this. So basically, you are sidestepping your opponent uh, while maintaining your pressure. This might work well against. Um, okay, so this might work well after moves such as. Quarterscope over 3 plus 4 at the wall. What I like to do is that I do Quarterscope over 3 plus 4 into side step 1 plus 2. Uh, Quarterscope over 3 plus 4 is plus 6 on block, but many people know that um, Lily, is, Lily is really slow, so they will not respect the plus frames and they will try to jab you. So then you can do side step 1 plus 2 and and you are and you will crush the opponent's jabs and if they don't press anything well then you're still good you are still at only minus 1 or minus 2 and you can side step again and you have another uh, opportunity to punish your opponent or do whatever you want to do it's just good and then we have the 10 hit combos whatever i'm not going to talk about the 10 hit combos Mm, okay, throws. This is her one throw. She gets Okizemi. 
She gets all Kizami after that. Even after her like, tooth throw and one plus two throw, whatever. They are alright throws, not amazing. And I already covered the Okizami from her throws in other in another video. I will link all of the videos um, where I talked about some of the moves in depth um, down below. Okay, so that's it. Do we have anything left? Any anything else left? All right, we have her wall throw. This used to be a really good combo ender in Tekken Tag 2, but not now because the damage is really weak. Don't use this if you don't have to. Um, she doesn't even have any good Okizemi afterwards. You, you may get a ground hit if the opponent stays grounded, but then again they can just hold back and stand up and your hit will win. Um, after against bears, um, you get a special juggle with the wall throw. You can do wall spot into jabs into the wall throw and that works on bears. But still, it doesn't deal enough damage. And okay, I think I covered every single move from Lily. If I missed anything, please let me know down below in the comments. Or if you have any further questions, just ask me, alright? I hope this very long video was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!